In Australia, where the wild is truly wild, the natural world is exceptionally lethal, with more venomous species than almost any other country. It also hosts the cassowary, one of the few birds known to occasionally kill humans, and the box jellyfish, whose sting can be fatal to humans. And let's not forget the usual suspects. Saltwater crocodiles, great white sharks, venomous spiders, and the highly venomous stonefish. As if that weren't enough, Australia is also home to some of the world's largest insects, and even eucalyptus tree branches can be dangerous. These branches can suddenly fall during hot, dry weather due to a phenomenon known as sudden limb drop, posing a significant risk to anyone nearby. Moreover, the country has witnessed the three biggest wildfires of the 21st century, solidifying its reputation as a land of formidable challenges. Despite all this, Australia is actually tamer now than it used to be. This isn't about its dinosaur past, but rather its more recent history with giant monitor lizards and other terrifying creatures. Incredibly, you don't have to go back too far to find this chaotic version of Australia. Only about 50,000 years ago, right when humans first set foot on the continent. Back then, Reptilian predators and other terrifying creatures ruled the landscape and newcomers quickly realized they had entered a realm of nightmares. One of these terrifying beasts was the Thylacoleo, also known as the marsupial lion. This predator was unlike any lion you know, being a marsupial rather than a feline, and best known for its immense size. Adults were the largest known mammalian predators to ever live in Australia. On average, Specimens were roughly equivalent in size to a large North American cougar, while the largest thylacoleo were comparable in size to fully grown female lions and tigers, with whom they also shared several physical traits. Yet this was no feline, far from it actually, as the thylacoleo was really a marsupial mammal most closely related to the koala, and like the koala, it's thought that thylacoleo had a smaller brain. However, in its case, a smaller brain was a huge advantage, as it gave the skull more space for extremely dense muscles and wide, sturdy bones. That ultimately led to the strongest bite, pound for pound, of any known mammal. It's been estimated that a medium-sized thylacoleo was capable of biting with the same force as a lion, 2.5 times its size, leading paleontologists to suspect that this marsupial was capable of taking down big-bodied prey that were 15 times heavier than itself. And it likely did so in an extremely unique fashion, thanks to its dentition, which consisted of large incisors similar to the elongated canines seen in other mammals. Moreover, it featured massive premolars that resembled flat blades. If its bite proved ineffective, the thylacoleo also possessed deadly claws. Each front foot sported a single large retractable claw attached to semi-opposable thumbs, allowing it to maneuver these formidable weapons easily and deliver fatal strikes when necessary. Alongside its robust muscles, these peculiar teeth were remarkably effective in dispatching prey, its incisors piercing deep into flesh while the premolars severed the animal's windpipe spinal cord and arteries, causing swift and lethal damage. This method of predation was so efficient that researchers estimate it took less than a minute for the marsupial lion to kill large prey, whereas an African lion may take 15 minutes or more for the same task. These claws were curved, suggesting Thylacoleo was adept at climbing, possibly hauling its kills up trees akin to leopards. This climbing ability enabled it to explore caves and traverse rough terrain, adding another dimension to its already formidable capabilities as a marsupial predator. Thus, Australia undoubtedly harbored some truly daunting predators, creating a captivating environment for early human inhabitants. Consider the awe-inspiring Megalania, a prehistoric giant among monitor lizards. Despite its reclassification to Varanus priscus, it's still widely known by its original name, which translates to Great Roamer, fitting for its colossal stature. And colossal, it truly was. The exact size of Megalania 
remains a topic of debate among paleontologists, but even conservative estimates suggest it reached at least 3.5 meters, 11 feet, in length, and weighed around 158 kilograms, 348 pounds. At a minimum, this made it as long as a sea lion and as heavy as a reindeer. However, some studies suggest it could have grown up to 7.9 meters, 26 feet, based on fragmentary fossils compared to modern monitor lizards. This would make it as long as the largest anaconda, but significantly heavier, with a potential maximum weight of up to two tons. More realistic estimates, though, place the weight of large megalania specimens at around 575 kilograms, 1,200 pounds. Despite its massive size, megalania shared many traits with its smaller relatives. It had long, recurved, razor-sharp teeth, perfect for gripping prey, and powerful legs and claws to subdue its victims. In true Australian fashion, megalania was likely venomous, akin to modern monitor lizards whose venom prevents blood clotting, causing prolonged bleeding and infection. Given its close relation to the Komodo dragon, some paleontologists theorize that megalania employed similar hunting techniques, inflicting a venomous bite and then retreating to let the venom do its work. Even if one managed to escape an initial attack, the venom would ensure a grim fate. All these attributes make Megalania a contender for one of the most formidable predators of its time. But if snakes give you the creeps, known as Ophidiophobia, then the ancient terror you'd dread most would be the Wanambi. This now-extinct giant serpent once roamed alongside creatures like Thylacolio and Megalania. Wanambi belonged to the Madsoide family, renowned for their robust jaws and enormous sizes. Among them, Wanambi stood out, reaching lengths comparable to today's largest snakes, with some individuals stretching up to 6 meters, 20 feet, similar to a large Burmese python. Unlike many other predators in Australia, Wanambi lacked venom. However, its sheer size made it a formidable hunter, likely employing tactics similar to those of modern constrictor snakes. It probably ambushed prey near water sources, swiftly striking and then using its powerful muscles to squeeze until the prey succumbed due to the lack of blood flow to vital organs. What made Wanambi particularly fearsome was its inability to swallow prey whole, owing to its inflexible and relatively smaller head. Instead, it tore into its victims with sharp teeth and a robust body, sometimes tearing them apart or even disemboweling them. This grisly hunting style may have posed a greater threat to early Australians than encounters with Megalania or Thylacolio. Indeed, studies indicate that even today, constrictor snake attacks remain a significant cause of death in certain indigenous communities. Meanwhile, in the expansive skies and open landscapes of prehistoric Australia, another kind of terror reigned supreme. Birds were not just large, they were truly monstrous, especially the fearsome Genyornis. This colossal bird, reminiscent of the terrifying Terra birds, belonged to a separate and equally formidable family of flightless giants known as the Dromornithidae, or Thunderbirds. Despite their menacing appearances, all members of this family, including Genyornis, were believed to be herbivores. However, their massive size alone was enough to inspire dread and provide a formidable defense. The Genyornis, in particular, towered over humans, with the average individual standing a staggering 2 meters or 6.5 feet tall. These creatures were not just tall, but built like tanks, their enormous and robust bones endowing them with incredible durability and heft, pushing their weight to a staggering quarter of a ton. Their mere presence was enough to send shivers down the spine of any potential threat. But size was not their only defense. If their towering stature and immense weight weren't sufficient to deter predators, the Genyornis had more weapons in its arsenal. This behemoth possessed a powerful beak capable of delivering devastating blows and sharp claws that could easily rend flesh. The combination of these formidable physical attributes made the Genyornis a creature to be feared and respected in the harsh and unforgiving prehistoric landscape of Australia. Another of this impressive creatures, 
was the formidable Procoptodon golia, revered as the largest kangaroo to ever roam the planet. Standing proudly at an imposing height of approximately two meters, this colossal herbivore possessed a unique array of features that set it apart from its contemporaries with an air of primal dominance. Unlike its modern kin, Procoptodon golia sported a compact, blunt-faced visage crowned with forward-facing eyes, a predatory design that bestowed it with unparalleled depth perception. This anatomical advantage was a critical adaptation in navigating the labyrinthine depths of primeval forests, ensuring acute awareness of potential threats and treacherous terrain. Yet, it was the creature's muscular hind legs that truly struck fear into the hearts of would-be predators. Renowned for their extraordinary spring-like power, these limbs were not only instrumental in effortless bounds across the landscape, but also delivered devastating, bone-shattering kicks to any adversary foolish enough to challenge its dominion. Such displays of strength and agility underscored Procoptodon Goliath's prowess as both hunter and defender in its harsh, prehistoric environment. Furthermore, the dietary choices of this gargantuan marsupial painted a portrait of a relentless herbivorous juggernaut. Armed with robust jaws and a specialized dental configuration, Procoptodon Goliath efficiently devoured tough, fibrous vegetation that even the hardiest of competitors dared not confront. This adaptive advantage likely secured its position atop the food chain in ancient Australia's cutthroat ecosystem, where survival was a relentless battle for supremacy. Ancient Australia clearly wasn't exactly a tourist hotspot. Just to underscore, nearly every dangerous creature you encounter in Australia today prowled the land back then, alongside these terrifying ancient beasts. Nature was relentless, punctuated by severe droughts. Despite these adversities, humans not only survived but flourished, commanding the landscape and successfully hunting the megafauna of that era. Perhaps we were the true apex predators of our time. Thanks for joining us, and until next time.